When I was on David's radio program a few weeks back, it, 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 turned, into, list of it turned into a vaudeville riff. <laughs> well, every we woman, worked with so many of the same people. Well, he interviewed all these women in, for his book that had an influence on Tennessee's plays, and I was stunned when I read it. Like, yeah. Lillian Gish was his first inspiration for Blanche, Blanche Dubois. Dubois. But every, almost every woman that he mentioned, I said, oh, I worked with her. Yeah. Or, or I had a, something unpleasant. Or a spat. Or pleasant or a spat. <laughs> no, Lillian Gish I hadn't met because yeah. John Gielgud had oh, yes. invited me to his 60th birthday party and rushed me in to see David, do you know Lillian and Dorothy? No, I don't know. <laughs> Gish is sure. I wasn't sure. around during silent that movie. But uh, she was terrific. I liked her. She was not of this Lil. world. Yeah, Lillian. I, I, I called her Miss Lillian. I never got it. <laughs> but she was not of this world. Um, she was, you know, denial and positive thinking. She had just lifted right off. You know, gravity had no effect on her. <laughs> reality, nothing. In her fortuny gowns and her beautiful uh, Sutton Place apartment. Um, but I learned she had a, a an attendant, a guy named James Frasher, who who went everywhere with her. And it was really strange. If I ever spoke to her while he was there, she was a horrible interview. Because I would say, I could ask her the most mundane question. When did you realize that, that you love Shakespeare? And she'd look at him, like, like and he'd go, well, you go ahead. And then she'd turn back to me. Was he of her age? Or was he was younger. Um, I guess he was in his 50s then, I suppose. She was in, I don't know, she was 112. I don't know how old she was. <laughs> but, but um, you know, and finally, something came up where he wasn't available. And I went to her apartment, and she was fabulous. So then it became a matter of how do I arrange to see her without him? But how did Tennessee decide that she should be Blanche Dubois? What was the Okay, right? well, Tennessee... We all know who Blanche Dubois is and speak her name to death. Okay. okay, Tennessee grew up and was inadequate, always. His father always pointed out that he was inadequate. He was a sissy and he didn't fit in. He was bullied and teased at school, so he, frequently, he would become hysterically ill to keep from going to school. And those were his favorite days because he'd be in bed with movie magazines and, and he and his mother would act out plots of movies they'd seen. And his mother told him what the ideal women were. And they started with these Cam Margaret Cameron photographs, you know. We should point out that his mother was the inspiration for Amanda, Amanda in yeah. Glass Menagerie. Exactly. We all know Glass Menagerie. <laughs> but she would say, this is an ideal woman. And in mo motion pictures, it's Lillian Gish. That is what a woman should be. She's pure, and she's virtuous, and she's wonderful. Okay. She's right. back on the camera. I'm yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Is that the, the camera? The camera going. Oh, I camera have my back to it the whole time. Oh, we, two, we should never point to the camera. It's bad luck. We have two cameras. They're, they're dollying back. You know, if you had Claudia Colby here, she only had one side know, of her but, face. And never mind if we had yeah, You always had to rearrange. If we had Faye Dunaway. The marriage, the marriage around <coughs> yeah. with Charles Way and yeah. Claudette Colbert, they, they designed the set without checking with Claudette. Uh -huh. And when she came in, she said, you have to redo the whole set because <laughs> they, yeah, they had two podiums on each side. They, uh -huh. they narrated and then went into the play. Yeah. And she couldn't be on the side because that face was up the stage front. Oh, these people. But go, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. But go on. So anyway, so Lillian Gish was his ideal woman. And so when uh, he was thinking of this lost woman uh, who became Blanche Dubois, he always saw Lillian Gish in the role. He also knew that nothing would impress his mother as much as the fact that he knew and worked with Lillian Gish. So he wanted to please his mother, and he wanted to work with Lillian Gish. And what Kazan told me, Kazan, really Kazan was much harsher. He would just say, she was all wrong, and we had to get rid of her. Tennessee was much nicer. She didn't understand <laughs> Blanche Dubois. So, like, for instance, when they had the first readings of it, you know, it, it began as a one-act play, Portrait of a Madonna, which is dedicated to Lillian Gish. She would read it and say, I don't understand this woman. She should just get a job and get on with her life. It's like, well, then there's no play. You know, like, no, she has to have this. Like, well, I, I'll just pray for her. And Zan would go, I mean, be, all these gestures he would be making to Tennessee. Lillian made her name in silent movies, yes. in Orphans of the Storm, and she was D.W. Yeah. D. Griffith's big leading lady. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and her sister, Dot, Dot, took care of her, you know, and she would get very upset because Dorothy had succumbed to alcoholism. Lillian Gish felt that alcoholism, if you became an alcoholic, a drug addict, or a homosexual, or went into real estate, I should add that. <laughs> You had walked into the darkness. <laughs> and, and, and there, it's, 
in the book, and I, uh, Tennessee went to a revival house, maybe the one on Fifth Avenue, that you, where you saw it, and he said, to go to see old Richard Barthelmess movies with um, Lillian Gish, and she would like watch it, and she, would, she was very, she still acted in real life, like in a silent film, you know, if she was doing all this, and, and she would like grab him like that, like, oh, and like, and someone would come on and be this close up of this face, and she'd go, abortion. Uh, what does that mean? She had an abortion. Uh, uh, and like, the Tennessee people go, shh, this is Lillian Gish here. You know? And like, she's like, oh, suicide. Yeah. Uh, okay, like, like, and then finally, one man came on the screen, and she grabbed Tennessee, and like, uh, and he thought, oh my God, what tragedy befell this person? She went, he went into real estate. <laughs> <laughs>